here is an unusual question to test your pattern recognition skills as well as spatial reasoning. You are presented with 3x3 matrix which has shapes inside and you need to find the next 3x3 matrix in the sequence. You are presented with four different choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I would recommend that you spend no more than 15 to 20 seconds thinking about this test. This is about as much time as you get in a real assessment. I'm pretty sure you figured it out, so I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I'm probably not going to surprise you when I say that to solve this challenge, you need to detect the pattern. And each shape here has its own pattern. For example, because we have three different shapes inside 3x3 three three matrix, we have circle, we have arrow and we have triangle, we need to look at each individual shape and determine pattern for each individual shape. Let's start with the arrow. Arrow alternates in color, changes from black to white and also rotates 90 degrees, staying inside the same middle square of the matrix. The tricky part here is that arrow rotates 90 degrees counterclockwise with every step. Now let's look at oval. Oval moves to the next corner counterclockwise. It starts in the upper left corner in the matrix 1, then moves to the lower left corner in the matrix 2, and then moves to the lower right corner in the matrix 3. Triangle alternates the color, changes from black to white, and also moves into the next middle section counterclockwise. If you follow all of these patterns, you will realize that the answer is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an exceptional question to test your knowledge of English. You need to build English alphabet word and you're presented with nine different letters. The letters are P, C, E, T, R, J, R, O, O. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the word. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time you get on the real test. Maybe pause this video to see if you can build a mental combination of letters that can build the word. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have other ways to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. I came up with the English word projector. Let me spell it for you. P R O J E C T O R. And the definition is projector is an optical device which is used to project an image onto a surface. Projector typically takes the images generated by a computer or a Blu ray player and reproduces them on the screen. Most commonly used projectors create an image by shining a light through small transparent lenses but some new types of projectors can project an image directly by using lasers. Did you solve it on your own? In the past, when I posted similar questions, I received a lot of comments about how to solve them correctly. And here are some tips I'd like to share with you to help you solve these types of challenges in the future. One idea might be to separate the consonants from the vowels. For example, the consonants here are P, C, R, T, J, R, and the vowels are E, O, and O. As you separate them, you can start building the word. For example, P, R, O is the set of letters that can start the correct word projector and can lead you to the correct answer. Another idea might be is to boost your vocabulary. You can read more or try to play these types of games and practice on the pen and paper during the test to create a list of possible combinations until you come up with the right solution. Hopefully these tips are helpful and allow you to do better on your next test. Here's an interesting and very unusual question where you need to count all dollar signs in the image. You're presented with the flower image. Image has many dollar signs here and you need to select the final answer out of four different choices. Choice A 6, choice B 7, choice C 8 and choice D 9. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can count all possible options. Ready or not, on my end I am moving forward 
to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I counted eight dollar signs. So my answer is choice C. The answer is C because there are six signs in the dollar bills as flower petals. One sign is in the middle of the flower. And then there is a one sign at the bottom of the flower base. Do you have a different answer? Please make sure to share in comments. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an amazing question where you are presented with four word pairs and you need to find the item that does not belong to the group. The first pair is flower and petal. The second pair is circle and arc. The third pair is cover and page. And last but not the least, fourth pair is chair and chairperson. You need to select the word pair that does not belong to the group. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The key here is to determine the relationship between the objects. And in all object pairs, one object is part of another. Let's look at the examples. Petal is part of the flower. Arc is part of the circle. And cover is part of the book. The only word pair where this rule does not work is chair and chairperson. Even though this object sounds similar, they are not part of each other. So the correct answer is choice D, chair and chairperson. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a very interesting problem which tests your analytical skills. You're presented with three circles and one circle is missing. You need to select the missing circle out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. I think the answer here is obvious, but please make sure to make your selection. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. As you might have noticed, there is another set of lines inside the circles. And four circles can be grouped together, forming a square inside. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to test your skills. You need to find the missing shape to build a square. You have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the correct answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and when you're ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is a very interesting question where you need to calculate percentage of Tesla Model S sales in 2023. You're presented with the bar chart, which shows sales for the periods of 2021, 2022, 2023 and 2024. And each section has sales for Model X, Model Y and Model S. Based on the information presented, you need to determine which number is correct out of four different choices. Choice A, 20%, choice B, 27%, choice C, 33%, and then choice D, 40%. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Hopefully you figured it out because I'm moving forward to share the final answer with you. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. First, let's take a close look at the 2023 sales. You can see that we sold 8 units of Model X, we sold 12 units of Model Y, and then 10 units of Model S. So total units sold in 2023 would be 8 plus 12 plus 10 equals 30. Now let's determine the percentage. We sold 10 units of Model S in 2023 which is one-third of the 30 units in total. So the correct choice here is one-third of 100%, which is approximately 33%. So the answer here is choice 3, 33%.
Hopefully you figured this out and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And here's the question for you to test your skills. You need to find the missing snowman. Please take a close look at the sequence and see if you can come up with the right answer by selecting one of the four following choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and once ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's an amazing question to test your math skills. You're presented with simple expression and you need to calculate the value of this expression. You have four different choices. Choice A, one. Choice B, three. Choice C, seven. And then choice D, nine. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can calculate the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you the correct answer. As you might have guessed, the correct answer here is choice A, one. But why? If you look at the expression closely, you will see that the first part that would need to be calculated is the division, dividing three by one third. To emphasize this, I put this expression into red parentheses. When you calculate three divided by one third, you will get to the result of nine. And then you need to do sequentially subtraction and then addition. Nine minus nine equals zero, plus one equals one. This is the reason the correct choice here is choice A, one. And then one last important reminder is that the sequence is determined based on the acronym PEMDAS. The sequence is driven by parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Hopefully you refreshed your memory from middle school and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's a wonderful question to test your analytical skills. You're presented with the series of shapes in the boxes. The first box has the arrow pointing left. Second box has triangle pointing left. Third box has a square. And then comes the box with the missing shape. You have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better ideas on how to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. You're probably tired of hearing it on this channel, but the key to solve these types of challenges is to find the pattern. And the pattern here is that the sides of the shape are increasing by one in each sequence. So for example, if you look at the first shape, it has two sides and the number continuously increases to three and four sides respectively, which means that the missing shape should have the five sides. And only shape B has five sides. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's one of my favorite questions where you need to count number of squares presented in the shape. You have four different choices. Choice A, eight. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 15 squares and choice D, 18 squares. Take a close look at the picture to see if you can come up with the right choice. Nobody is going to give you a tip during the real test, but I am going to give you a hint. Look at the squares inside the squares. Ready or not, I am moving forward to get you to the correct solution. Believe it or not, I counted 15 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Did you get to a different number? Please correct me and post your solution in the comment section of this video.
I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question to see how quickly and effectively you can solve the challenge. You're presented with three triangles. Each triangle has numbers in the corners as well as the number in the middle. First triangle has numbers 4, 18 and 2 and number in the middle 3. Second triangle has outside numbers 6, 56 and 1 and has 8 in the middle. And then the third triangle has number 3 in the middle and numbers 5 and 103 on the outside. In the upper right corner of the third triangle, you have a missing number, which you need to calculate out of four different choices. Choices A, 7. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 20. And choice D, 30. Do you see the answer? The solution is very obvious, but I would like you to try to get to it on your own. Ready or not, I am moving forward to reveal you the solution. If you have any suggestions how to solve these types of challenges faster, please share in comments. One phrase that you hear on this channel the most is always look for patterns. And then the pattern here is that the top number divided by the sum of the bottom two numbers on the outside of the triangle is equal the middle number inside of the triangle. So let's look at the first two examples. 18 divided on 4 plus 2 equals 18 divided by 6 equals 3. In the second middle triangle, 56 divided by 6 plus 1 equals 56 divided by 7 and equals 8. So to calculate the missing number, we need to build an equation. 105 divided 5 plus missing number equals 3. To calculate missing number, we need to divide 105 by 3 and subtract 5. 35 minus 5 equals 30. So the answer is choice D, 30. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now can easily solve these types of challenges on the test. A lot of people ask how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. I love this question because it truly makes you think to determine the final answer. You need to determine which number has the lowest value. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 1 third plus 0 0.4. Choice B, 1 plus 2.1. Choice C, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.31. And choice D, 6 tenth. Give yourself a few seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. The tricky part here is that the question is designed to make you do a mental math. To get to the final answer, you need to simplify all the options. For example, option A, 1 third plus 0 0.4 equals 0 0.33 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.73. Choice B, 1 plus 2.1 equals 3.1. Choice C, 0 0.20 plus 0 0.31 equals 0 0.51 and choice D 6 tenths equals 0 0.6 which means if you look at the answers that option C has the smallest value of 0 0.51 followed by option D, A and B. Was it challenging for you? Please share your thoughts and suggestions on how to better solve it in comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the content Please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.